Hello, my name is Zerin F. Hai. You can also call me Zera or simply Z. The game we are going to be playing in this series is Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, a roguelike survival simulator of ridiculous depth. This is the ongoing story of the being known as the S'more. She likely does not remember her name due to the amount of time she has died. It will not be her last either. The story of this individual is played in front of a live audience known as the Twitch. In her first life, back when she knew her name, she only went by her street name. Her street name was the S'more, capital T, capital S. She was a massively overweight cannibal parkour expert. She loved to junk food, but so was somehow allergic to every type of food known to man. A feisty four foot eight at almost 400 pounds, amongst a litany of health issues, she was also a sorceress. Unfortunately, even her powers were not able to keep her from being arrested for a long list of crimes, including cannibalism, for which she was placed onto a prisoner island shortly before the cataclysm happened. It was not long before her fellow prisoners started wanting to take a bite out of her. She fought like a demon, wielding her limited fire abilities to the best she could, until she herself succumbed to the fires she placed out. Surrounded by zombies and having no way out, she continued to spread fire so that no zombie would survive trying to eat her. She came back as the S'more the Second. She woke in yet another prison cell, with the way out already open for her. Though unlike last time, she was in a laboratory of some sort. Also, she was heavily mutated, with fangs and claws and other mutated parts on her. On top of the mutations, she was heavily and hastily worked on with cybernetic parts many of the cybernetic parts poking out of her skin in awkward angles, causing her to feel unwell quickly. Upon leaving the cell, she learned that she was also a frightening beast of combat, and tore apart the first zombie she ran into, which was a large brute of an abomination. Though while she learned that she could eat a variety of foods, it didn't help her when she was still massively overweight, and a biotic part was actively pouring acid into her body. She struggled against the elements in the laboratory and mostly succeeded, though she was still falling apart, so she took upon her not limited knowledge trying to remove the biotic part out of her with a surgical machine known as the Autodoc. She feebly tried to program the machine to fix her, but it failed, ripping parts of her body as it fumbled around with bad programming. She survived, but absolutely needed to remove the parts that were killing her. So she tried again. The, the machine put her to sleep again and unfortunately ripped her apart. The S'more, the second, died on the operating table. The S'more, the third, awakes like a gooey phoenix, overweight, albino, and paradoxically a master a parkour expert. She bore mutated parts upon her, along with yet cybernetic parts, with yet more negative traits to her psyche and somehow addicted to every drug known to man. Despite that, she survived the withdrawals. She managed to remove the worst parts of her cybernetics and recover from a cold. Unfortunately, she was stuck on the first and second floor of the laboratory, the second half of the second floor being completely overrun by otherworldly monsters, slimes, and other creatures. She had no way out, no key card to open the top floor, and no chemicals that could help her. She tried to learn how to disarm traps the best she could. Unfortunately, luck was not upon her side. When she tried to disable a portal trap, it teleported her enough times to gain the attention of outer planar hounds. While she only barely survived the hounds, she ran into the never-ending hordes of the outer planar creatures in the other half of the second floor, and thus she died. The S'more, the fourth, had a short and unfortunate end. She awoke in a laboratory that had its thermometer set too far below freezing. She survived briefly, covering herself as in, in as many blankets as she could, until she got the cold and died in her sleep. 
some unseen hand was manipulating her over the years, adding code to her DNA and removing it at whim. One thing that did not change was that she was an albino, massively overweight, parkour expert with very poor eyesight. She was effectively living disabled, though was somehow able to come back. She was also immune to the zombie plague that were affecting most others. She would come back time and time again, but the only thing that she knows for sure is that she is the s'more.